that's it in me bless his holy name great is our God and greatly to be praised we thank God for moments in his presence bless the Lord tonight for our presence here and we ask that you prepare yourselves to receive from the Lord. Now, God, I ask that for the moments remaining, you would touch us, bless us, incline our hearts to receive your word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. The Lord bless you this evening. We're thanking God for another opportunity to share with those of you here in the cathedral as well as those of our Victorious viewers, can we praise God for those who are watching online tonight? Glory to God. I want that we would quickly hear what the Spirit says. We're certainly not going to hold you before uh, the time, or longer than the time, should I say, a lot to us to share the Word of God, but want to quickly investigate what thus saith the Lord. Would you now please investigate the scripture with me, I want to specifically hone in on Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 1 and verse number 17. Very familiar passage, very familiar text. Again, Romans 1, verse 17. And it reads as thus, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. And can we all say amen? Uh, for just a few moments this evening, I want to reason with you the lesson intended to be a blessing to your spirit. I want to talk about from faith to faith. From faith to faith. I think it's safe to say that all of us know something pertaining to the value of faith. We know what the Bible says about faith. We understand, according to Hebrews 11 and 6, without faith it is impossible to please God. Jesus speaks uh, to Peter's concern as he marvels in Mark 11 about the fact that the fig tree that Jesus cursed is dried up as he had spoken and Jesus' response to Peter is have faith in God. That same book of Mark chapter 9 verse 22 again verse 23 rather says all things are possible to him that believes. And, of course, the hallmark of scripture uh, regarding faith, Hebrews uh, 11 and 1, assures us that faith gives substance mm, to all of our hopes and, as well, makes certain the realities of things we do not see. So now we've heard quips and we've heard quotes. Um, we, we, we have heard that uh, faith is like a muscle. It grows strong with exercise. That uh, it sees the invisible and feels the intangible all these wonderful things. But I really want to deal tonight with another area. Most of us don't question the value of faith. 
But I'm sure some of you, like I, have had issues with the acquisition of faith. And moreover, how do we acquire more of it? Because the fact of the matter is there are times, and I'm sure there are those of you that would agree with me, where you feel your faith is not sufficient. And the reason why I say that is because, again, if one felt he or, he or her's faith was sufficient, then you would testify to the fact that the results would be more prevalent in your life. And so as a result of you not seeing what you think you should see or have received the evidence of your faith, it then leaves you wanting and wondering, do I have enough faith? And if not, how do I navigate from faith to faith? From faith to faith and not be satisfied with the level of faith that I have because my faith is always challenged. Praise God. So tonight for just a little while, I would like us to explore what it really means to go from faith to faith, from one level of faith uh, to another. I have grown weary of those of us in time believers being less effective than the saints of the early church. If indeed we possess what they possessed, why aren't we seeing what they saw? Why aren't we getting the results that they got? Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. And so, I think that all of us in our foundational faith are secure. What do you mean by that, Pastor? It's the faith that it took for you to be saved. Everybody has that experience. If you're saved tonight, you got that level down pat. There's no need to re-examine that. But I think you need to understand that your primary faith is your saving faith. But the next level of your faith needs to be your power-giving faith what I'd like to also call your fruitful faith. And so with that being said, can we examine what the word of the Lord says? Our first faith is about assurance, and that next level of faith we're talking about has to do with what we can become. And so I want you to know your salvation is about a gift. That next level of faith is about your growth because there's some people who are saved. They've been gifted, but they've never grown. And that's my concern tonight, that we are, we're gifted but not growing. How to have more powerful faith, more effective faith, it has to start with your understanding and belief that your faith can grow. If you don't believe there's more, then there's nothing I or anybody else can do to convince you of the same. You must believe that he is and that he is what? A rewarder of those who diligently seek him. If your faith in God is not what it ought to be, then there's nothing God can do. Because if God has been 
deleted from your thinking as it pertains to ability, then you have literally, or moreover, figuratively, literally, and spiritually tied God's hands. Hmm. I want to just share this little bit. It might help you to comprehend what I'm saying. Uh, learning to swim, learning to ride a bike, learning to skate. You know where they all started from? The belief that you could. Why even get on the bicycle if you don't believe you can? You see people defeat them, them own, their own selves. I, I've seen, uh, like you have, some of these uh, shows on television where the contestants are, are uh, challenged with these certain feats. And they talk them, I can't, I can't, they say, I can't, I can't do it. And with a partner trying to encourage them they defeat their own selves because of their disbelief. Forget about some little train talking to himself, saying, I think I can. I'm telling you, this is not about what you think. There has to be confidence, strong persuasion, for those of you that are watching me sitting at home and those of you, praise God, watching me sitting in this auditorium, the same faith you use to sit in the seat you're sitting in, not one of you turn the chair upside down to assure yourself that it was secure. You took your confidence that the manufacturers who are faulty people like you did their job and so without thinking you plopped down in the chair. I'm telling you that's the same level of confidence, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, that it takes to increase your level of faith. I'm telling you and I'll keep telling you it will be extremely Difficult to believe God to heal cancer when you reach for ibuprofen, aspirin, and pain relievers for a, mid, a mere headache. Are you getting what I'm saying? Amen. Praise the Lord. If, if, and I keep saying to myself when I confront those circumstances myself, I have an opportunity to flex my faith or not, and then I have to say to my body, is Tylenol what's missing? Is that what your, is that what your body needs, or does it need more water? But the reality of the fact is, we're impatient in the development of our faith. Because the society in which we live has given us a sense of entitlement and nobody wants to wait on anything for any reason at all. That is why all of technology has made us lazy, helpless individuals. Praise the Lord, there were times in which, amen, our brain power was more at use that the average human being, Dr. Davis, could recall thousands of numbers of telephones in their head. But now with technology, if you don't go to contacts, if you don't speak into that and say, call mama, praise God, you will be lost because you have no ability to retain in your mind what the mind could because of convenience and needing to have everything at your fingertips. Everything about what we do. I've said it a hundred times, I'll say it a hundred more. Everything 
everything in this society requires that things be expedited. We don't want anything homemade because it takes too long. So you've got quick grits. You've got minute rice. Talk to me. You got a minute steak. Everything microwaved and since y'all became a little more health conscious, y'all figure, well, I'll go from the microwave to the air fryer. But the fact of the matter is, your spirit is so anxious, you'll stand in front of a microwave and count down the minutes because you got to have it right away. I'm trying to tell you, in your patience, I'm talking and what the scripture says in the, your patience you possess your soul or your mind you're about to lose it because of your impatience and I'm telling you as it relates to your faith praise God you don't give God the time mm, that you give medication Lord help me to minister tonight you don't give God the time that you give an injection my God uh huh yes we don't walk out of a doctor's office and turn back around and require a refund on our copay because we are not feeling immediately better they have psychologically trained you uh -huh, that as you go you'll feel better and you got more faith in somebody who's only gone to school for eight years then had an internship for a few years and now they are experts on any given subject. The devil is a liar. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. God knows more about your body than you do. I wish you would take the time, praise God, that you would do in medical research to study what the Bible says about health, to study what the Bible says about diet, to study what the Bible says about nutrition. And if we could apply the scripture because of our faith, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And again, I state, if that's how faith comes, then we must be students of the word of God. There's a reason why both prayer and Bible study are the least attended in the average church across the world. Just came from Jamaica when I made that, must, that same uh, 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 statement while I was ministering about four or five different pastors shouted, amen, pastor. I said, it's over here too. Yeah, everywhere. Prayer and Bible study are the less frequented service, the most needed, check it out, but the less frequented because the enemy knows if I can keep them from talking to God and keep them as uneducated as possible, then half of my job is over. I won't even have to convince them. They'll convince themselves God can't do it won't nothing change things won't get better and then invite the rest of the saints to their pity party but only those who know their God shall be strong and shall do exploits I'm trying to tell you the only difference between me and you what I declare is not style hallelujah it's not even substance it's that I have given myself over to nothing but this word of God hallelujah to God that's right praise God while you are relaxing I'm studying praise God while you're watching television I'm in the word of God and in prayer so I can have something to say to you concerning your well-being not just the sermon to get you hyped on Sunday but you're going to need something to help you from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and all day Saturday and the only way you're going to get that from one who proclaims the word of God is that they've got to be entrenched. You can, anybody can have a good one good hot message but to have a continued amen volume where you speak to God you cannot speak for God until
until you're constantly speaking to God. And so what I submit to you tonight is if we're going to go from this level of faith to the next level of faith, we're going to spend time in prayer and in the word of God. All right. Just want to get that established. And I know I'm, my voice is all up and everything. Because I'm in the life-saving business. And it frustrates me to see people perish. What does perish mean? Perish means that it's premature death. Premature. That means that something could have been done to prevent. And I'm submitting to you, beloved, more of your spiritual destiny is in your hands than you think. Not the church you belong to. Yeah. More of your spiritual destiny is in your hand because you can belong to 55 different churches and still miss God because you've turned your entire spiritual destiny into the hands of a man or woman that you respect and honor, and that's fine. But you can't turn your whole life over. I don't have a schedule. I do the best I can to help motivate you. It's just like anybody else. Praise the Lord. Uh, people have spent thousands of dollars trying to develop uh, uh, a lifestyle that helps them to stay healthy and maintain a certain uh, physical uh, size. <laughs> Try to be nice with it. See what I'm saying? But for every book that's written and for every diet that's submitted, no one can be with you. Oh, they'll tell you to call. And there'll be a counselor waiting to talk to you, but that's already pre-recorded. In real time, you're going to have to do it yourself. You're gonna have that talk with yourself. Yeah, you know that talk. It's called the talk. Get yourself up out this bed. Sit on the side. Come on, get up. Because you know, once you put that water on your body, it's no turning back then. By the time you done dry it off, you got to put some clothes on now. Now, see, you, you, see, you see what's going on? You see how that domino effect is? Praise the Lord, because if you roll over, it's a wrap. If you hit that snooze button, talking about another 15 minutes, it ain't going to happen. You got to have that talk, get up, get out. And then what blesses you when you finally make that move, you feel so much better. But guess what? Old Slewfoot comes back the next day and says, you did good yesterday. You deserve a break today. No! Ain't no break. Tell somebody this is lifestyle. This ain't no fad. This ain't no diet. This is lifestyle. Thank you, good man. I hear you talking to me. It's lifestyle. Every, I do this every day. It's like breathing. That's if you want to live. And you can't make excuses. Because I know what they sound like. Ain't nobody preached two services on Sunday but me. Elder Mike, you know, he could do it because he don't do it every Sunday. And it's Monday. You need to rest. That's the preacher's Sabbath. If I listen to that dude, saints, they be rolling me in here. I got to, I got to do like Paul said. I got to bring myself under subjection. What does all this have to do with faith, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. It's about increasing your faith. Listen to this. And I got to move on here because I, I sense God wanting to say more. Remember when Jesus was on the boat 
and a great storm arose, saints, and the disciples woke him up because they were afraid. He looked at them and said the following words, O ye of... Mm. You remember that lady's daughter who was possessed with the devil and, 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 and Jesus came and touched her? Uh, Jesus looked at the woman because at first he didn't, he didn't even pay no attention to her. He finally looks at the woman and says, your faith is great. Wow. Did you see the progression there? Paul writes to the church at Thessalonica and, he's, and he said something that was very powerful. He was thankful because their faith was greatly enlarged. Anybody see progression? Little faith, great faith, and then greatly enlarged. If that faith is to expand, beloved, it has to expand through power. My God. Because talk is cheap right now. And that's why I've been saying to God, I believe you to show yourself strong. I, I need the generation behind us to tell the generation after them, we saw God in our generation. We saw things that others can testify to. We saw what faith in God could do. We saw miracles, we saw signs, we saw wonders. Can I tell you something that probably ought to sound obvious but is not obvious to many people? The way to expand your faith is to get around other folks who got greater faith than you do. <laughs> I know y'all waiting me to come up with something deep and profound. Yeah. Iron sharpens iron. You know what they always tell you. If you're the smartest one in the class, you need to get out that class. You need to, get, you need to go around somebody that can challenge you. I remember as a youngster, Prophetess Marlene, I, I, was a, I was a weakling in prayer. I'm like saying, Am I, do I need to eat more Cheerios or something? Because when, when I was coming into park, Mother Julia Rice, Mother Josephine Shepherd were going into overdrive. And I'm like saying, when are these old women going to go to sleep? It's 2 o'clock in the morning. And, you know, and then, I mean, overdrive. Then, I mean, then they get a second win. <laughs> oh, God, they'd say. Like they knew him personally. And I'm saying, what is it? And then I started finding out the more I started hanging around them old mothers, my endurance and tolerance for prayer increased. You follow what I'm saying? Because I was, you know, I'm a youngster, so hey, all I know is Jesus. And I, when I tell you I worked Jesus, I worked, <laughs> I worked Jesus so till I was, a, I was a Jesus calling somebody. You know what I'm telling you? Jesus, 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 because that's all I knew. But then, but then guess what? How many know that not only will the scriptures teach you how to pray, life will teach you how to pray. Oh, life will mature your prayer. Oh, you'll go, you'll go right on into it. You'll start understanding Amen. Hey, <laughs> your experiences will name God for you. You won't even have to think about, forget about the compound names of Jehovah. 
You start coming with stuff that ain't even in the Bible. Bill payer ain't in the Bible. But tell me, won't he pay a bill? Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I'm trying to get you to understand. Life has a way of making you understand that God can become anything and everything you need him to be when you recognize that he's able. That's where faith kicks in. Let's get out of here. But I want you to understand this before we conclude. That you have to start associating yourself more in arenas of faith. Free yourself from doubting folk. You know what I'm saying? Anybody that says to you, they can't, you can't. Sorry. Out of their presence, you go. You must have faith that's connected and associated with others who have great faith. Romans 1 and 12, that I may be encouraged together with you while among you. Each of us by the other's faith, both yours and mine. You hear what Paul says? Powerful. First Thessalonians 3 and 2. Paul talks to Timothy. And we send Timothy, our brother, and God's fellow worker in the gospel of Christ. To do what? To strengthen and encourage you as to your Glory to God. Oftentimes, circumstances, beloved, and uh, bad problems uh, will, will, will cause situations to turn sour. And so I tell folks all the time that good circumstances and bad friends equal bad circumstances. You hear what I'm saying? And, and that's what you gotta understand, beloved, that, uh, and on the other hand, you can have uh, bad circumstances and good friends, and that'll equal victory. That association thing is so very important. Your faith has to be enlarged to the greater extent by the examples. Why do you think Hebrews 11 was written? For our example, what they did, how they believed God, to what degree they believed God. No one just leaves home on a whim and tells your family, we'll know when we get there. I'm telling you, I take my hat off to any wife to any wife that follows a man talking about, we're going, where we're going. I'll let you know when we get there. God will let me know when to stop. I take my, <laughs> that's what Abraham did. Father faith, Sarah, I'll tell you when we get there. Just come on in, get on this camera, let's go. It's, it's humorous, but at the same time, if our faith by that example hasn't reached that level, then we still have more faithing to do. Are you hearing me tonight? I want you to also understand that your faith increases, and I must share this, by both your reading and embracing God's word. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that, that's, that's, that's just it, beloved. There's no, no way around it. I, I wish I could tell you just rubbing shoulders with other folks would be it. But uh, this kind of faith requires you <laughs> to move into arenas of promise based upon your knowledge of God's word. If indeed I made a statement tonight that on Sunday each of you would receive something from me 
very special, I would hope and trust that you would show up for it. Now for those few hundred folk who are not present, they would come looking for what they normally receive. And once having seen you receive from me those unique and special gifts, would query how you got them. Because I heard, I was exposed to, wait a minute, and I embraced what was told to me. Because I can tell you now, I got something for you Sunday. You can come and somebody nuts. Then, well, he probably going to pull one of them fast ones like he said. He's going to bring us back something from Jamaica. And it was, him, and it was his cell. See, 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 you can't let the enemy fool you. Because you got to understand there's more in God's presence than there is in God's hand. I'm preaching tonight. I, I was supposed to be teaching, but I'm preaching tonight. I said there's more in God's presence than there is in his hand. And that's the problem with the church. We're so busy trying to seek God's hand instead of seeking God's face. We get more. We'd have more. We would be more if we sought the face of God. When I talk about submitting yourself, when I talk about embracing the word of God, I need you to really get this. Dwight Moody, very popular teacher of the word of God, out of Chicago, Illinois, has been, an has been a constant encourager of those who desire faith. He said one time, I prayed for faith and thought that someday it would come down and strike me like lightning. But faith didn't seem to come. One day I read in Romans that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I had up to this time, he says, closed my Bible and prayed for faith. He says, now I open my Bible and begin to study and faith has been growing ever since. How do you think faith is developed without discipline? Dr. Davis, who has taught for the greater portion of her life, will tell you <laughs> that pupils, I call them, because there's, to me, there's a difference between a pupil and a student, a student studies, a pupil shows up to class. And people really feel like they should get something for showing up. I'm old school and y'all gonna have to help me and I know what technology's done, but I, 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 I can't, I just can't handle my grandchildren telling me, amen, that ain't got no books. What you mean you ain't got no books? You gotta have some books. <laughs> gotta have some books. Uh, oh no, yeah. I don't care nothing about no tablet. Where's your book? What you mean you ain't got no homework? I'll give you some. <laughs> if you're not at 
actively engaging in something that challenges you and sharpens you, how do you expect to excel? And I'm telling you, beloved, you cannot see life's woes for just life's woes. You got to see them as a challenge to your faith. Yeah. Okay, I see what's going on here. I'm going to have to stretch my faith. Yeah, I see now. Praise the Lord. I can't get in here and have one leg in the bed and the other one on the floor talking about I'm saying my prayers before I go to bed. Life says, oh, no, you won't. Uh -huh. Ain't no now I lay me down to sleep. Oh, no, 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 no. You had no idea that you were going to have to have an intercessory prayer session before you went to bed because life is grabbing you in the throat. And I know what I'm talking about because I, too, like you, have wanted to have leisurely times. But even while in Jamaica, West Indies, trying to minister, hallelujah, and another part of the world then comes an urgent text that arrests me. And I I can't even sleep in the back of the hotel that I'm in. I'm up in the AM hour saying, God, I need a miracle here. And it's not just some patronizing prayer. I need to bombard heaven because my faith is looking for results. I don't just want to be marked present. I want to see something. Oh, God, tell somebody when I pray, I'm looking for something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I, I'm, I'm looking for God. I don't care about what I see. I just want to know, God, where are you in this? That's all I, you know, yeah, I, I expect craziness to go down. I expect sorrow. I expect pain. I expect grief. I just want to know, where are you? And isn't that wonderful? Yeah, you know, that's reasonable, I think. Isn't that reasonable? Yeah, it's reasonable in your human experience. Yeah. Didn't Job ask it? Yeah. I done pre moved to the right, backed up, proceed forward. I can't perceive you. Where are you? <laughs> and they tell me you never answer a question with a question, but you take that up with God. He answers the question by saying, where were you? Yeah. In essence, I've been here. Huh? And, and, and so that's what you got to understand. And God begins to rehearse to Job all of his handiwork. So what he's trying to tell you is the next time you get in trouble, start asking yourself, can the God that made the stars fix this? Can the God who before there was a winner where or here or there spoke and said, let there be light and there was light. Can he handle the situation you're dealing with now? And because you consider the heavens and the stars and all uh, the world that God has made, that's when you begin to say to yourself, certainly he can handle my situation. So tonight, as we conclude, let me share again God and his intention for us is to go from faith to faith. Amen? Can I tell you this, beloved? And I want you to hear, Pastor, when I make this statement, I don't want it to be too familiar. Beloved, we got to practice prayer and fasting. I'm going to say that again. I didn't tell you to pray and fast. We must practice. Let me see if I find a better way to put it. We must rehearse. There it goes again. That repetition that becomes a lifestyle. I don't have time to get into it. Read Matthew 17. The disciples come to Jesus. And uh, the Bible says, 
the man comes to Jesus' disciples and asks them to help because the boy is possessed with a demon. Uh, he asked the disciples to pray for him. You know the rest of the text. They prayed and nothing happened. Didn't pray change things? They prayed and nothing happened. Then Jesus prayed and something happened. The disciples got discouraged and said, why is it that when we pray, nothing happens? <laughs> and the Lord answers and says, because you have little faith. You follow what I'm saying? You have little faith and you have little discipline. Notice this. This kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Jesus is saying there are some situations that are so immense until it takes intensive prayer, intensive discipline. Yeah. Dr. Davis, remember she came to Tennessee as I was blessed of the Lord and awarded a doctorate in ministry. My family came at the same time and unfortunately on their last connecting flight was a very severe thunderstorm. And they were on one of these smaller jets. My son was really in pain because he's a relatively tall young man, he's been tall for quite a while and the seats were cramping. But more importantly, turbulence was at an all-time high. At which point, Mike turns to his sister and says, Poppy's praying. No, no, dear, he's praying for real. Like in other words, you know how we do in public. No, what he was saying was, my father was praying aloud. Because at this time, it ain't about what people think. Lord, save us from impending danger. There comes a time, beloved, where your prayer has to almost emulate the prayer of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. That immense, that intense. And I think until you understand what you're dealing with, and maybe that's what it is, we don't understand that when, when life intensifies, prayer has to. You don't... You don't shrink back, beloved. What did the young man say? Son, you got to lean in. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. So tonight I, I want to end by saying in order for that faith to grow, you got to remember past victory. Y'all got that? Everybody say, remember past victory. You need a spiritual diary. Holy Ghost journal. Document your deliverance. You know what I mean? Make those things slip from your mind. And before you know anything, you are doubting something that you've already overcome because you forgot. Tell somebody the same God.
that's, that's, that's the key. That's the key. Praise the Lord. You ain't got to go. God ain't got to become something new because it's new to you. Jesus Christ, the same what? Yesterday, today, and forevermore. And so what I'm submitting to you, beloved, is when you have chronicled not just your crises, but when you have put an entry in that spiritual journal of every victory won, it increases your faith to know unto him that is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all you ask or think. Give God praise with your hands, everybody. Hallelujah. That's what I'm asking God to do for us tonight. Church-wide, Lord, increase our faith. We, are we to just simply accept life's woefulness? Are we to be a slave to the whims of the enemy? Are we just to put up with it? Go online, look in the archive for that message preached a few weeks ago. Enough is enough. When you get to that point where you understand that change is no longer optional, it's mandatory. It then will shift the trajectory of your thinking about your faith in God. Father, we thank you tonight for your word and ask that you would bless these, your people, help them to develop and go from faith to faith. For as it is written, the just shall live by faith. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Give God praise everybody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I ask that you join us tonight as we come to the end of our services with sacrifices of joy. And those of you of our victorious viewers, ways to give momentarily will appear on, appear on screen. And ask that you would do all that you can to let God know, I don't have faith in faith. Lord, I have faith in you. It's unfortunate that faith has become a commodity in Christendom now. Almost a magic wand with some kind of formula. That faith is only objective. That faith is only a means to an end and that end is financial prosperity. It grieves my heart to see how faith is abused in the body of Christ and misused. The Bible didn't say the just will get rich by faith. It says the just shall live by faith. So tonight would you join me in honoring God with both our tithe and offering. Father, we pray blessings upon these in Jesus' name. As that you reward their faith with favor. Thank God. Amen. God bless those of you of our victorious viewers. Look for you on Sunday as we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Those of you that would come now with your gifts, let's honor the Lord. Thanks for watching Training for Raining. Join us this Sunday at 10.30 a.m. for in-person Sunday school. You can also join us on Zoom by entering meeting ID number 865-9832-7314 and passcode 3820. Our Sunday worship service starts at 12 p.m. noon. Has God got a word for you? Visit us at www.kingdomcathedral.org for more information. And follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram.